Right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and pipeline or CRM. Joining you as usual from sunny San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined by Joel Quintella, who is in Houston in Texas. How are you doing? Good, good. How are you doing, John? Good. Excellent, excellent. And uh, Joel is the founder and CEO of Quintella Minority Owned Business Enterprise, specializing in, H specializing in HR technology solutions. Over 25 years experience, worked with numerous Fortune 500 clients to improve their uh, hiring processes. And you hold a master's and a PhD in business psychology. Correct. So what we're going to talk about today is what separates the 20% from the 80%. And you say that is reality. So mm -hmm. just explain what you mean, what you mean by that. That's correct. So uh, we do work with the uh, Fortune 500. It's mainly setting up um, HR technology to help them hire better people. And we use like uh, personality assessments, role plays, interviews. Uh, but before that, we have to identify what the competencies are that are required for that role. Mm -hmm. So account execs need certain competencies, inside sales need certain competencies. Um, but there is one that tends to stand out um, as a differentiator that the 20% or even the 10% uh, mm -hmm. have that the 80% do not. Uh, and it's it's a, their perception of reality. Mm -hmm. So uh, everybody you've heard, perception is reality. Uh, I don't know how many times you've heard that. Yeah, uh, yeah, I love that. Uh, it, it's terrible. It's not true. Right. Uh, perception, your perception is your reality. So then you um, so you then looked at what was what professional poker players were doing, right? <laughs> and yeah. you develop and you developed uh, a method called poker, P O K E R, yes. to go from perception to reality. First of all, I mean, tell me a little bit about the genesis of developing this and why you focused on poker players. Well, because poker players are really good at. Um, trying to understand what reality is. So they're trying to figure out what your cards are when they can't see it. They're trying to figure out what you, uh, how you play in certain, uh, uh, you know, certain hands, what the table is looking like or feeling like. They're really good at, at, at the really good ones are, are even so good they can guess what your hand is without you even saying. Mm -hmm. that's, that's, that's pretty incredible. Uh, but on the, you know, on the people side or the performance side, um, you know, there are some, some, and I'm curious what you, what, you know, from your, from your sure. team, there are some people that are, uh, some sales reps that are just not great at understanding what the real reality is because their perception is their reality. Mm -hmm. Nobody agrees with that. But the problem is that that perception of reality is going to drive everything you do. Yeah. Yeah. So if your reality is way off, that's a problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I, I I definitely would agree with you. I think there are, uh, you, you know, there's a lot of sometimes you have salespeople who have happy years, I would like, like to call it. Yeah. And that's where that's where I kind of I what you say, I interpreted with my happy years. And that's why, you know, I come back from the meeting going, ah, oh, fantastic. Everything is going great. But the reality is you, all you did was agree to meet me for lunch again. So all, the reality is all I really am doing is buying you another lunch. It hasn't moved any of the process forward. Exactly. Um, you know, and some people are just really good at, really good at uh, understanding what the reality is. So if they're really good at it, then they're going to understand, well, uh, I'm, I'm not ahead. Now I better do something. Mm -hmm. I am ahead. I better do something. If you are way off, you think you're ahead. And then you behave like your head and that, that's it. Everything is, everything is gone. And I see this all the time. Um, and it's hard, it's easy to spot. I'm sure if you think of five sales reps that, you know, at the moment, you could probably, uh, you could probably say this one is pretty close to reality. This one isn't all this one is, this one isn't. Um, so it's a natural talent to some extent, but there's also a way to go from perception to reality. And that's where the poker, uh, analogy comes right. into play, um, and it is uh, P O K E R, and I just developed the model based on what these expert um, poker players do to get to reality. Yeah, and the number one. Yeah, go ahead. 
No, I was going to say, and obviously a big part part of this is self awareness, right? Because yeah. I think I I think that is the key to success. To be honest, it's self awareness. Yeah. Unfortunately, most of us develop it to like <laughs> over a long period of time and way too late, if and like probably it. the hard way. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, and that, that's actually one of the one of the uh, uh, one of the letters. Uh, we start with P. It's uh, what what poker players say is play the player. So they don't necessarily play the cards that they're holding, mm. but they understand the the individual that's or the individuals that are playing against them. And a lot of people think it's tails. There's always one tail, or not, and it isn't that. There's actually a pattern of behavior that these poker players are looking for. For example, I I don't play anything but aces. So if I'm in the hand, I'm putting money in. The really good ones just no no no. He's he's already got aces. Um, but they're looking for patterns. What did mm. I do two hours ago? How did I play this particular hand? Uh, everybody has sort of a range of hands that they're going to do and a range of behavior that you're going to do. And whenever that behavior that you do is outside of that range, you better check to see what's happening. But you have to know what that range is. Yeah. Uh, and that's the, the play the player component. Uh, the second one, the O, is what you were talking about, which is uh, in poker, if you, uh, what they call a bad beat, is, you know, if you're 99%. A chance of winning and then somebody gets the exact card that they need and they it, it really uh, upsets you right and they call it on tilt being on tilt so the o is you have to overcome being on tilt as quickly as possible because if you don't you're going to make some really dumb mistakes right and you're going to act on emotion right it, emotion right exactly and for number one is what you were saying which is you have to understand what the trigger is something's mm -hmm. going to trigger you and you're going to fly out the handle well, you better understand what that is. And then when you are in tilt and it's going to happen, you need to get out of it quickly. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and and, what, and what's, what I was saying, Joel, what's fascinating is is in situations like that is your body. I mean, it's it's not just an emotion. It's a physiological. Your body will kind of tell you that, too, if you pay attention. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Or something the universe tells you where to go, right? Yeah. You listen, <laughs> you listen close enough or you just, you know, ignore the signs. Mm -hmm. um, but, the, you know, the you know, the good poker players understand that and even walk away from the table or you know just right. take a break you know exactly when you have to go or you just start spiraling and it's 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 an interesting yet sad thing to watch right? yeah <laughs> for sure for sure yeah so what's k the k is you need to know your table image so you need to know what other people think about you in the sales process because you when you know that you'll understand why they're acting the way they are towards you and if you don't know, you're, you're not going to really understand why they're doing and what they're saying to you. So you need to figure out what they think about you mm -hmm. fairly quickly. Yeah. So in in I would say like insatiable curiosity. I think that's also that's a key key trait, and that really does separate people. It does exactly. You're tapping into one of the other one of the other. <laughs> it's perfect. Which you're the expert, right? So I was I was really anxious to see what you thought about this uh, about this. Uh, you know, perception to reality and the ability to get there. Um, and the, so the, the K is know your table image. Uh, the E is uh, exert pressure. Mm -hmm. And in sales, it's always action is king. Uh, but the reality is it's focused action is king. Right? Yeah. So action is better than non-action. But you need to know when you exert pressure and when you don't exert mm -hmm. pressure. Uh, mm -hmm. And that just takes... I and, I, and I think, and I think of that equation. It's the latter part is the one that's that's probably the hardest sometimes. Yeah, uh, yeah where you see really top salespeople know when to kind of back off a little bit. Yeah, uh, less experienced ones sometimes you know think, well, I didn't exert enough pressure, so maybe I should double down or pile it on, or or as you said, like we discussed a moment, maybe exert a little bit of pressure and you don't get the reaction you're looking for, so it totally throws you. <laughs> it throws you. And then if your perception of reality is way off, well, yeah. you know, you don't put pressure when you shouldn't and not put pressure when you when you actually should. Mm -hmm. And, I, you know, I, we see this all the time. And sometimes, uh, you know, if, you're, if your client, your champion is, is actually selling your product for you, yeah. you should shut up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. You should take yes for an answer. Exactly. <laughs> I'm going to let them, you know, sell for me internally. Uh, but... You know, if you don't understand that, you can just jump right in and, you know, yeah. you know, cut them off. Uh, now, R 
is what you're talking about, which is uh, in poker, they, they say, read your hand. You need to understand uh, there's always a probability. Uh, and in poker, there's uh, Texas Hold'em, there's the initial two cards that, mm -hmm. that you hold in your hand. And there's a probability at that point that you might win and somebody else might win, somebody else might win. There's probability. And then when the flop comes, which is when they put the three cards down, that probability changes. Because something happened, now the probability is something else, right? Mm -hmm, yeah. You may not be ahead these days or right now, or uh, maybe you are, maybe you're further ahead. And then when the, uh, the turn, which is the fourth card, comes in, that probability changes again. And you need to know what that is. And then, of course, on the river, the very last, that probability changes. And if you don't know what the probability is, you better ask what it is. And poker players will sit there and stare at you for a while <laughs> to see, <laughs> see what you're doing. Uh, they'll ask you questions, you know, to see what your eyes are doing. And again, they're looking for the patterns. And, uh, and then if you can't figure it out, they know, I don't know. So right. good, good sales reps uh, understand that they know what it is or they don't know what it is. And if they don't know what it is, you have to do something to figure that out. Yeah, and and like you said, I mean, in in sales, you know, you need maybe need to ask more deeper questions. Maybe you need to delve a little deeper into things. I think that's also a trap sometimes people fall into is when they're selling something is is when you when you communicate a need or something, and I jump on it immediately. <laughs> I think, oh, I've got the solution to that. Yeah, yeah. But if I spend if I spent a little more time discussing yeah. it with you and exploring it with you, I may yeah. discover that this is one you can live with. It's not yeah. that urgent. It's what. But if I had continued on the conversation and not gone down this this rat hole, we would have gotten to the to the really compelling thing. Yeah. Another part, you, you see the, you know, never, never sell what's already sold. Mm -hmm. you, need to, you need to shut up when they're, you know, you, you know, you've already sold it and you keep going and then you get yourself out of the, out of the yeah, deal because yeah. you said something stupid, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. That happens all the time. It, and, mm -hmm. you know, I've learned the hard way. <laughs> That's what I shouldn't do. Yeah. So, uh, so when you see those those uh, poker those poker pros, what mm -hmm. are, so what, from what you're talking about, obviously one of the key traits is, very deliberate intentional actions yeah yeah exactly and and they understand that uh and other people don't these these seem like very uh, easy tactics that you can learn but it takes them forever to know that um you know know your table image you know that's hard to that's hard to read mm -hmm. for some individuals but they understand that maybe they don't know what it is and then they so one they understand that i don't know what it is <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know what it is. I need to do something about mm -hmm. it. Yeah, um, and that's pretty much where it's it's more of a they've learned how to do this. One recognize it, and they've learned what they can do to get out of it or to understand more about what's happening. Um, that just moves them closer to reality, and therefore they make better decisions when they're uh, when they're playing against you. Yeah, and I think that that is a great uh, correlation with your top top salespeople who are gathering lots of different inputs all the time, yeah. and then you know bringing them together and and trying to see, as you said, see the patterns, see what's going on, as opposed to just superficially looking at things. Exactly, and um, I always say that there's there's always selling going on. It's a matter of whether you're doing it or somebody else is doing it, <laughs> so, and they are. By the way. <laughs> Uh, he, he had an example of this today. Just you know, we thought we were ahead, and then our client sent us an email that went, Whoa, "Okay, we are not ahead, and they're actually we have competitors now. <laughs> now we have to figure out right. you know, what that is, uh, you know. But you have to understand. So the email came through, and it's a little bit different in terms of the way they typically talk to you. A little bit colder, a little bit of it. Oh, okay, something is wrong. <laughs> I better, I better find out what that is. <laughs> Yeah, no, absolutely. And again, it's, you know, it, it's, it's trying to figure out the, the, as you said, the patterns, here's something that's out of character with how the communication has been up to now. Exactly. Therefore, you know, and it, and not in a good way. So now you have to go, okay, yeah. something, something has happened here. It may not be anything you've done. It yeah. may be something that's happened in the organization, but something has happened that you need yeah. to take a couple of steps back and really dig into it with them. Exactly. And, but if you don't, if you don't understand that and your perception of reality, um, you know, you're, you're way off on it. You're not going to know what to do. 
and you're just going to continue and we would have just continued like hey there's no competition let's just keep going and that would have been pretty bad you know <laughs> yeah you know at the last minute we find out that we we weren't and we didn't get the deal right yeah and unfortunately that happens that happens uh, a lot again i think it's and I think as you go through the sales process, as we, as your, whatever your sales process happens to be, I think r rigorous uh, adherence to your sales process is key. Yeah. And I, I, I presume like none of these uh, poker pros turn up and wing it, do they? I mean, they don't just roll in and just say, no. oh, "I'm just going to wing it here." No. <laughs> well, occasionally, if you're on tilt, then you probably you might just right. you know, try to push your hand in when you really shouldn't. Uh, right. You know, and you just start spiraling. But for the most part, yeah, they're very controlled. They know exactly when to get up because they're on tilt. They know exactly what they don't know uh, where they are in the hand. So they'll do something. Mm -hmm. It's some tricks like, you know, like they start moving their chips, put their yeah. chips a little closer to the line, they start talking to you, see what happens. <laughs> and then they can guess because they know your range of hands. Right, and right. They're watching. So they kind of go, oh, you did this last time. Therefore, you're probably holding an ace king. Therefore, I better. Fold. Yeah, and that's and that, I mean, that's a really good uh, point as well is um, knowing when to fold, yeah. and just like that in sales, knowing when to go, either this isn't a good opportunity or this yeah. opportunity isn't going our way, and I don't see any way of pulling this back. Uh, therefore, I should get out, and that's a thing I think that really undoes a lot of people because instinctively you want to hang on to the end, and and you want to hang on, and you think, okay, maybe maybe something will happen. Like you're hoping for that hail mary at the end. Yeah, it's it's. I'm amazed at how often it happens. Mm -hmm. Such a forecasting, you know, you sort of have to, yeah. you know. Uh, but you know, sometimes it's you know, you ask a couple of questions and you find out that maybe they don't understand exactly what's happening. But it was pretty obvious to you, right? As you're as you're uh, managing them, yeah. Um, and just some people are just better at that. And, and again, it's the 20, 80 percent, and the 80 percent you have to try to coach. And yeah. So um, this is why it's you're not where you think you are. Mm -hmm. uh, but sure, we, we have to know when to walk away. And some clients you just don't want. Period. Right. Uh, yeah, I, yeah, especially if your pipeline is not looking that fantastic here, you, you, you kind of, there you go, perception again, we used to call this the feel good funnel is when you have, when you have a lot of opportunities yeah. in your, in your pipeline, makes yeah. you feel good. Yeah. You're not closing any right now, but you're thinking mm, six months, I'm going to, we're going to be in great shape. And I'm telling my manager six months, uh, I'm going to have all this stuff. Yeah. Six months time, I'm going to tell you the same story <laughs> because 90% of it has dropped out. But I'm going to tell you, oh, I know I said that, but, but look at, look at my early stage right now. It's even bigger. And, and I think that is one of the hardest things for people to do. It is yeah. to, is to, is to clean your pipeline and be okay with the fact that less is more. Exactly. And you just have to know what that, what that is, you know, you don't have to do a percentage, you know, 75% or 70, whatever you should know. Yes. No, maybe mm -hmm. uh, in that particular deal. And then you have to back off or, you know, you keep going or you say, this is a six month or deal. And I just need to work it. And I need to adjust my behavior uh, that way versus pressing, pressing, uh, or, you know, just walk away. Yeah. You know, there's always a laws of physics, laws of uh, motion. You know, uh, things at rest tend to stay at rest. Things in motion tend to stay in motion. If something's at rest, you should probably do something else because it's really hard to take people off of where they are. But you got to know that they're sitting there and there's not much you can do. Yeah. And that's where the that's where the perception versus reality comes in. I mean, that's a hard reality to face, but that's sometimes what you have to do. If you don't have a better than average chance of closing it, you yeah. probably want to walk away. And I'm sure the same is with poker players who you're not going to throw your chips in on something that you're that you're iffy on. No, unless unless you know that uh, you're playing against me and I'm going to fold everything. <laughs> <laughs> are you gonna are you playing against me and I don't really know the rules? So, <laughs> so whatever you tell me, I'm gonna believe. <laughs> I, I, you know, I'm horrible because I, I, I don't know how to bluff, Good. which is a pretty important skill <laughs> in brokers. Yeah. Well, that'd probably be me. I'd probably bluff on everything. So then it would just become everyone just going, just bluffing. That's all he ever does. <laughs> well, that's gonna be your table image, right? And then yeah, uh, the bluffer. You bluff, yeah. <laughs> they wouldn't know, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, listen, Joel, this has been fascinating. Uh, great, great. Love the methodology. Uh, the methodology is called Poker, P-O-K-E-R. 
Uh, all of uh, Joel's information is going to be below this video. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about what you do. Well, I, I'm, I'm actually a computer programmer turned business psychologist. And for us, we just means we, we, we do help companies hire better people because, you know, uh, hiring is a, is a, is a probability game, just like sales, right? Mm -hmm. You don't know whether somebody's going to do well in six months or three months or nine months. Uh, but there is a way to increase that probability and they're pretty straightforward things. But number one is you have to identify, you know, what are the things that are really important to do? And that's what we help clients. Okay. You have this position. Uh, I know it kind of looks like, you know, your competitor position, but it isn't, you know, what does it look like for you? You have to be really careful. And then you sort of work backwards and say, these are the things that I'm looking for. How can I actually assess those things? Some yeah. things are interviews, some things are role plays, some things are assessments. Uh, and that's how you increase the probability of success. Uh, and, and, you know, if you're Walmart, you can uh, you can miss a million times. But if you hit a million times, yeah. a lot of money. Yeah, no, I'm absolutely. And I think, honestly, I think hiring is one of the most, one of the hardest things. And especially if you're hiring for salespeople, it's even, you've multiplied that by a million. But, uh, and and I would challenge most people. I freely admit myself, I guarantee over my career, I have hired way more wrong people than right people. Because as you say, it's hard if you don't have a good process in place. And sometimes even if you do, you, you can't figure out until about six months in, you know, three to six <laughs> months in. And so I think anything that helps you hire better is a good thing. Yeah, especially in the interview. There is a better way to interview versus just a conversation we're talking about. Yeah. And it's, you know, not rocket science, but mm -hmm. you just have to tweak it a little bit, mm -hmm. especially for the folks that are really good at talking a big game. Yeah. Uh, you know, they get back pretty quickly. And, and if, you do, if you're hiring salespeople and role plays isn't part of your hiring process, there's, it's, there's something wrong. There's something exactly, or analysis presentations, yeah. or, you know, maybe you start looking at this perception reality where, you know, where are they? Yeah. Uh, typically, you know, you can do that by using assessments, like personality tests, IQ tests. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Well, listen, thanks again, Joel. Thank you for watching and listening. See you all again very soon.